Hello, grade eight geography learners. I trust that you are well. Today's lesson continues to examine the factors that affect our country's temperature and rainfall. Now, as you know, there are five factors that influence our temperature and rainfall. And the first factor that we had discussed is the distance from the equator also referred to as latitude. In this factor here, we explain, and yes, you know this, that places along the equator are going to be warmer, while places along the poles, both the North and the South Pole, will experience lower temperatures and therefore lower rainfall. Important to also note that the amount of rainfall depends on the temperature of an area. In other words, the temperature influences rainfall of an area. So, under this factor, once again, we know that areas near the equator are going to be warmer. We give reasons for that. Areas along the poles are going to be colder. And again, we had given reasons for that. Lesson number two in our geography lesson for social science focuses on ocean currents. And it does have a bearing on the distance from the equator. The equator and of course the poles will influence the nature of these ocean currents as you would see just now. And the other factors are distance from the sea, altitude and mountains, which of course we'll discuss as the days unfold. Now, I'm, I'm certain you're asking the question, what is an ocean current? An ocean current are the large masses of water that are in constant movement in the ocean. Right? The ocean current are the large masses of water that are constantly moving. The ocean currents will drive this water in a certain direction. So what then causes these ocean currents? What then will cause the water in the oceans to move? And of course, there would be any combination of these factors. The winds can cause the oceans to the ocean currents of the water to move in a certain direction. For example, you may have examined, may have witnessed that on a very windy day, uh, the ocean currents are quite strong, the tides are quite high, the waves are quite high, the differences in the water temperature, which means that some areas are extremely hot, some areas are cold, and those differences can cause movements in the water. And like we discussed in the term one work, the rotation of the earth. So these three factors will interact to cause the movement of the water in a certain direction. It will also, it'll also uh, play a role in influencing the temperature and the rainfall of certain areas. Right? So let's move on to see what's going to happen. Now, water at the poles is cold. We know why. The water from the poles is cold. And yes, you guessed right, the water at the equator, the oceans at the equator is going to be warm. Now, nature has its own way of correcting this imbalance. What is the imbalance? It's been cold at the poles and it's been warm at the equator. That's an imbalance. And nature wants to correct this imbalance. So what does it do? The winds will move the water 
from the equator towards the poles, there's a bit, the water will move from the equator towards the poles, so the equator is too hot, and water from the poles will move towards the equator. To bring about this balance and yes as you move on to choose geography in grades 10 and 11 we further explore how these things take place and how they interact to result in wind and such like aspects here's a diagram showing us the ocean currents of the world and uh, our focus is not all of the ocean currents. We, we're focusing on this area here, Africa, and in particular, South Africa, because we're asking what factors influence the climate of South Africa. And you'll note the color red indicates the warm ocean. There's the, the warm ocean, the warm ocean current, rather, that is flowing in the Indian Ocean. Here's the Indian Ocean here. Yeah? And there's the warm ocean current, the Agullus, the warm Agullus current. There's it flowing from there. Let me just change the nature of that color because warm ocean should be in red. And we, I've got them in different colors. So the warm ocean, we're saying, should be in red. And because the color red indicates uh, warm. So there's the, there's the warm ocean blowing from there. That's it. And you'll note that this is the equator. So the warm oceans originate from the equator because the equator is warm. So we have two warm oceans. One is a warm Agullus current and the other is a warm Mozambique current, both flowing in the Indian Ocean, both flowing from the equator and they're moving southwards. Then we have the cold Benguela current. There's it here. The color blue indicates a cold current. The cold Benguela current, which flows in the Atlantic Ocean, that's here on the side here, the Atlantic Ocean. And this cold ocean current is, is making its way from the poles to the equator to bring about that balance that we spoke about. Now, somewhere here, somewhere here, some of us may have gone on a holiday to Cape Town, and we, as part of our tourist activity, we will go to Cape Point to see this area here where the two oceans appear to meet. Right? So, in fact, the iconic race in Cape Town, which is called the Two Oceans Marathon, uh, would be named after these two oceans here. The Indian Ocean is there, the Atlantic Ocean is here, and of course, they would have these things here. Robben Island would be somewhere here. Robben Island is here, a piece of land surrounded by water, a piece of land. Our late president, Nelson Mandela, and many others were imprisoned in this area here, and they were unable to escape in part because the temperature of the water was extremely cold. So there's your warm Agullus current, also flowing here is a warm Mozambique current, and on the west coast here is the cold, cold Benguela current that flows in the Atlantic Ocean. And of course, these two ocean currents are going to influence the temperature and rainfall of the areas along which they flow. Again, and the diagram showing you much the same thing. Again, just focusing on these two oceans. And there you can see, again, there's your warm Mozambique current that is flowing there, and the warm Mozambique current flowing there from the uh, equator, to the Indian Ocean, the warm Gullus current, and then of course the Atlantic Ocean, there's your cold Benguela current flowing from the pole, the South Pole, making its way towards the equator. Right, and again, 
we'll note in a few minutes how it's going to influence the temperature and the rainfall of those areas. So once again, the factor we're now speaking about is a factor of ocean currents, and let's examine to see what's going to be happening. So there's your warm ocean currents, there's your warm Magallus currents from the equator, and watch here, it results in warmer temperatures. So when the winds blow from the Indian Ocean and the winds will reach Durban on the side here, these winds are going to increase the temperature of Durban. So Durban's temperature is going to go higher. Along the west coast, you have Port Nollet. And of course, your maps will show that to you. Along the west coast, you'll have Port Nollet. And it says the cold current is going to lower the temperature along this area here. So the east coast, Durban and areas along the east coast will have a warmer temperature because of the warm Mozambique and the warm Agulhas current. Places along the west coast, Port Nollet and Cape Town down here is going to have lower temperatures because they're influenced by the cold Benguela current. And like we said, the ocean currents will also influence the rainfall of the area. Now, as you can see here, rainfall decreases from east to west. There's the east and there's the west. The rainfall will decrease as you move that way, which means this area gets more rain and this area will get less rain. And the reason why this area gets more rain is because of the higher temperatures we mentioned earlier, the warmer temperatures. Because warm air will absorb and store more moisture. The warm air is pregnant with moisture. The warm air carries more moisture. And by the same token, cold air is dry. Cold air is dry, cold air is heavy, and cold air will sink, hence the word descending. Now, as you know, for rain to form, the air needs to rise, and it's warm air needs to rise. And as the warm air rises, the warm air will condense, it will form clouds, and form tiny droplets of water, which become heavy in the upper atmosphere and eventually come down as rain. So we are saying that the East Coast has a higher temperature because of the warm Mozambique and warmer Gullis currents. And therefore it also influences the rainfall, resulting in higher rainfall because warm air absorbs and stores more moisture, which results in more rain. The West Coast has the cold Benguela current flowing along it, which decreases the temperature of the area. And the air is cold, it's dry, it's heavy, and it sinks. Descending is a big word for air sinking. And if air sinks, and if air is cold and air is dry, we have a smaller chance of getting rain. And therefore we're saying the area has lower rainfall. And again, all this is because of the ocean currents. All right, so there's your notes that you can go through and look at them. There's your warm Gullis current, warm water from the equator, warm water, warm water warms the air, and therefore Durban would experience higher temperatures, and higher rainfall, and you can see that it also causes your last bullet here. It also causes higher rainfall because the air is moist. The next slide talks about the cold Benguela current. And again, you can see the cold ocean current here in blue. In blue writing, the cold ocean current, where it comes from, from the polar areas, the air is cold, resulting in Port Nollet on the west coast having lower temperatures in summer and even lower during winter. The cold ocean currents, the air is dry, it's heavy, 
it will sink less moisture and that results in lower rainfall. All right, so you, again, you can see that the ocean current plays a role in that. And we've gone through that again quickly, the same diagram we saw earlier. And again, you can, the diagram will talk to you and give you the reasons as to what's going to happen. So in geography, when the, when the examinations are being set, a diagram will be presented to you and questions are based on that diagram. Now, armed with this knowledge, I now invite you learners to complete the activity on the ocean currents where you'll examine statistics of places along the East Coast and West Coast, and you will check how the ocean current is going to influence the temperature and the rainfall of the areas along which they flow. And in the examinations, you can be assured of a 10 mark question being asked in a, question in a section like this. So do have a pleasant day, and we'll chat to you in the next few days discuss the answers to your questions and stay tuned.